Alright, it is the morning after the break burner, and we're here with Mark Weir. We've got the silver, not the gold. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So we're going to have a bit of a chat with him and find out how things are going on. Um, so I suppose we'll do the normal stuff first, which is, um, this is your first time in New Zealand? It is, yes. And how long are you going to stay here? Uh, till the uh, 11th. So that's another week and a bit? Yep, yep. And what are you going to be doing? Uh, Lawrence is going to be taking us on like the sweetest rides around and uh, showing us the routes. And is that Lawrence from Ground Effect? Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> Man, he's so well dressed and, yeah. and completely awesome. He is a good dude. So uh, what rides have you done so far apart from the brake burner? Uh, we did, uh, what is that, Anaconda over uh, in your neck of the woods, right? Yep. And then uh, we did Mount, Mount Hook or Mount, Mount Hutt. Mount Mount Hutt. Hutt. That was super fun. Yeah. Good Rudy stuff. A lot different than we have in the States. It's not like uh, really, really tight and technical. And it was interesting. We always like to get schooled by the locals on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and which of the riders were standing out? Uh, well, Lawrence was just schooling us with his low pressure scene, just going down the thing straight on the wet roots. And it was, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. It took us a little while to get used to him. And, uh, now we're going to go do a bunch more, so it should be good. Nice. And Caleb was sort of flailing around off the back? Uh, he actually was pinning it down and letting his bag just lead the way and just, <laughs> you know, like a turtle on his back. Now, he was doing good with the big camera bag and taking pictures. Um, it was fun. Yeah, he was he was actually riding really well. He rides better than any of the uh, American rider camera dudes. Yeah, he rides pretty well for, for a walkie with a big camera bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, yesterday... How did you find the course? Uh, I like the course. It's quite a, quite a bit of climbing. Uh, not bad though. I mean, considering uh, how much descending there was, you know, uh, it was interesting how the Jeff said I'd get second, and uh, I was stoked that he even thought I could get second. <laughs> it was impressive. Um, but yeah, it was. It started out good. We just kept battling, and the the course just makes you want to go faster every lap. And the first lap was our first time down, so we were just getting kind of used to getting settled in, my teammate Jiro and I, and uh, after a while, about four hours in, started getting a little worked over. I think I might have run the you know, wrong bike a little too uh, portly, but... Uh, so so what would have what would you have run if you'd seen the course before? Uh, I probably would have ran like a Blur LT with a, bit, a little bit lighter tires. I mean, instead of the VP free with downhill tires, it's just a little aggressive. Um, it wasn't super necessary to have that much suspension. Um, it, although it was fun, you know, it's just getting up those steep climbs mm. slowly just chops away at your carcass and yeah. kind of oh, hurts you a bit. Didn't realize you were on a beat. That would have been close to 40 pounds? Yeah, it was, 38? It's like 30, it's probably 34, 35, it's like 35. Well, that's down light. Tires. Yeah, fairly light. I mean, it's got light stuff on it. Have a single ring, a 36 tooth ring, and then just real heavy downhill tires mm. and wheels, which you know, if you change those out, it makes a big difference mm -hmm. on how the bike handles. Yeah. But I didn't know what to expect, so <laughs> I just brought the bike that would be the most fun for the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And um, you and Jeff were sort of jeweling it out for yeah. uh, most of the race. Yeah, he uh, he's funny. He's, he's, he's loose, boy. He's loose. He's fast, and he's real loose. But uh, he makes it happen every time, sideways, you know, backwards, whatever it is. But, uh, yeah, we rode the chair a bunch together, and he's a good dude, and he goes real fast, and it was fun riding the whole time. We probably rode the chairlift 12 times together, so. Nice. He didn't get the edge, like, push him off? Or no, no, no. We were, his bike. we were helping each other out, you know. It's, he, he crashed a couple times in front of me, and I just wait for him to get back up and have him go in front. <laughs> it was fun watching him, you know, so. He, the whole thing was it was good. The first after the first lap though, he did a little sneaky thing. I was getting to the chair. I was in front of him. I started pinning it up the one climb to the chair, and all of a sudden he comes up and we're I'm all oh, okay. We'll ride together. And he zooms in front of me and jumps on the chair with another rider and puts a <laughs> chair gap on me. And I was like, what a little sneaker. So it was, it was pretty interesting. Then we started doing it back and forth. I put a couple chairs on him and kept going. And then he finally uh, put the nail in the coffin started pulling away. So uh, what broke you? I, I, I just started cramping. I, I don't, I haven't been right, it's been winter where we're at, so I haven't really been training. I'm like a lot heavier than I usually am right now, but just doing six hour rides, I haven't done any of those mm. in, you know, three months. I've been just doing like hour and a half, two hour rides and probably drinking too much. So <laughs> I'm not in the best shape of, of my uh, year. So 
it just cracked me probably just keep on doing the hard efforts sustained hard efforts just just broke my legs and made me cramp so I was one-legged pedaling sometimes just to work oh. out the cramps but yeah so, so well, I, you, I, I mean seeing you out there you were doing pretty well if you were in that much <laughs> that much of a state have you done races like that before uh, nothing quite like that I mean we do some races uh, the FMF Enduro series in France um, which is a 10 race series in a weekend so 10 to 10 races three different courses no practice three times on each course but they're not like uh, sustained six hours mm -hmm. this is this is cool because it's like a you know 24-hour race or a 12-hour race without the lame part you know <laughs> yeah. which is like you know just doing the rabbit laps you yeah. get the chairlift you get to talk a little it's kind of more uh, community mm. which is cool and you get to just straight pin it and uh, it's fair bit more dangerous than a 24-hour race that's for sure <laughs> everyone's super nice they get out of the way quick if you come up on mm. them and there's seem to be way more like a lot more faster people than you would get in the states at a race like this because it seems like people are way more fit here and they probably are yeah um there so were there were quite a few um there was two uh ex junior downhill yeah, champions saw, yeah uh, <laughs> yeah there were quite a few of the 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 big names in and, and lots and lots of old school as well um you would have seen all the crusty old 40 somethings you know 30 somethings 40 somethings a lot of those guys they were racing downhill in the early 90s. Okay. And, and suddenly they, they're turning up and they're, they're still kicking it. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was impressive. You know, mm -hmm. Mark Dixon took care of us and got us in that, and I was fired up to see that uh, he was right. It was rad. So you'd like to see more events like this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see why not. These are, It's a cool, cool format because you can do it in the States, too. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not like you need a special mountain you can kind of do it anywhere as long as you get the right track and I don't know if I've ever raced in conditions that good with the rain all day yesterday yeah. and then there's no dust I mean that's like a gift right there just no dust mm -hmm. just following people and having fun yeah. so I would hope that they would do more races like this yeah nice. so does that mean you might be back next year oh yeah yeah I'd, I'd love to come back as long as they uh, accept us at the border <laughs> <laughs> nice and uh, do you know where you're heading to from uh, now, are they telling you or just keeping you in the well, dark? Well, you know, I mean, they don't keep me in the dark, but I'm not that bright, so they, just, they tell me and it goes right through me. So, <laughs> I think it's the, uh, is it Creases? Yeah. Kerwins? Yeah, we're going to take them somewhere. Creases, Kerwins, Walker Marina, Whites Bay. Come on, Caleb, get around. Yeah, yeah, Caleb. Mount Fife, Mount Fife. Mount Fife. I think I'm not doing Mount Fife. Mount Fife. Yes, you are. <laughs> and uh, I imagine there's going to be an article in that fabulous magazine Spoke. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, with some really stylish photos from the walkie. We, we might get some without uh, Larry someone dabbing Ormond. in the background. Best photo so far. Best photo so far. Best photo ever. Lawrence ruins it. Cool. Um, well, I suppose we should we should uh, knock that on the head because this is the web and we can only fit about <laughs> yeah. so much on there. So, is there, do you want to give props to your sponsors? Props to anyone here? Uh, Mark Dixon. He he made it all happen for us. The guy's awesome. He uh, took care of the whole trip, and you know I thank him a ton. And these guys that are with us, Caleb and Lawrence, are are awesome. And all my sponsors are great too. But. These guys are better. For, I mean, they, they're going out of their way for us, and it's impressive. And you know, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. Nice. And Jeff for keeping you honest yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Well, he definitely did that. The guy was just chopping wood out there, and I was the I was the wood. <laughs> nice. Big <laughs> talk. Thank you.